Welcome everybody to Iron on Iron Bible Study tonight. We are in our last chapter of First Samuel, uh, chapter thirty-one. Uh, we're gonna have somebody pray, and then we're gonna jump right into it. Somebody want to pray us in? I pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day's journey. We thank you for waking us this morning, giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you, Lord, for intellect, our right mind. And we thank you, Lord, for just giving us a mind, Lord, to want to be about learning more and to becoming a better disciple of Jesus Christ. Bless this Bible study. Bless each and every individual individually and collectively, Lord, and bless our teacher tonight, Lord, crown his head with wisdom and knowledge, and help us that in everything we do, we will do it unto your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Okay, well, we started at, we're going to start at 31. Anybody want to uh, give us a... a What happened up to then? How about that, brother Griff? You take care of that. Okay. So uh, right now we're at the, the pivotal point in David's life in the battle between Israel and the Philistines. Uh, last one, we saw that David was dismissed by the Philistines king to return back to uh, his uh, his hold up there. And uh, when he got back, he found out that his, his wife and the, the wives of all his men had been had been captured and taken away by a raiding party while they were while they were with the Philistines. Uh, this prompted David to turn back to God and ask him, should he follow after these men? And if he did follow after, when he overtake them? Uh, this is this is this is David turning back to God, and um, he he was told by God that he will uh, overtake them. He went out, he overtook the men, and uh, as a show of him as a coming into his king them. Instead of him taking all the spoils for himself, he not only shared with the men who stayed behind with the uh, with the the cargo when they had to split up, but he also shared with the nations that were around him at the time, and uh, that brings us right into our final battle of, of thirty one. Thirty one. Okay, I'm gonna start thirty one off, and I'm gonna read from one to three. Or it's 31, that's be coming out of the New King James Version. Now the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell, slain on Mount Gibeah. Then the Philistines followed hard after Saul and his sons, and the Philistines killed Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malchishu. Malchishu, Saul's son. The battle became fierce against Saul. The archers hit him and he was severely wounded by the archers. Well, it's, it's showing right there that uh, the demise of Saul, really, and his, and his, and his sons, mm -hmm. uh, they was going to, they said the battle was fierce, so Saul, them, then, then, they fought violently. I mean, the men did anyway, and uh, and it just you know, and, and not only did Saul get killed, and he said he killed his sons too. Even though Jonathan was after David's own heart, you know, and but he still had to, you know, he still fought with his dad, and mm -hmm. it showed that showed a little loyalty right there. Now I don't know if he was exactly loyal to his daddy, or he was just loyal to, to the army of God, you know, mm -hmm. and, and 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 that and uh. But uh, and then they said the archers, it, it, the archers hit him and severely wounded by the archers. They didn't actually say that he killed that they that he killed him right there. As we go on, we'll see some of that. Anybody want to add to that? Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a good point you made that that even Jonathan, even though he was he was with David, he he suffered right along with his dad and and. Mm -hmm. And this is what, what God had told him that, that he was not just gonna uh kill him, but he was gonna kill his sons too. And I think it was uh maybe like a little little pride thing that, that God was gonna wipe out not just you, he was gonna wipe out all of your history, you know. He, he he's not even gonna leave a remnant of, of your legacy on the throne. He's he's gonna clear it all out. 
So uh, when Dave was coming up, it was no question who's the next thing he's going to be. Because uh, the guy doing his crescendo here. Mm. Mm. Okay. Anybody else want to add to that? Well, bro, Griff, why don't you read verse four, uh, four through seven? All right, reading verse four through seven. I'm reading out the uh, NIV. Uh, Saul said to his armor bearer, "Draw your sword and run me through, or these uncircumcised fellows will come and run me through and abuse me." But his armor bearer was terrified; it would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When the armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he too fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men died together that same day. When the Israelites along the valley and those across the Jordan saw that the Israelite army had fled and that Saul and his sons had died, they abandoned their towns and fled, and the Philistines came and occupied them. So, I mean, again, this is just a, a grand end to Saul. He couldn't even get nobody to kill him be, uh, because of, 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 the, of, the, of his reputation he put up, and uh, he ended up having to fall on his own sword. And uh, I, I think that it was just befitting, you know, because he 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 put himself in this situation. You know, a lot of people say when you get in a bad situation, you just have to fall on the sword and, and fall on your own sword and end it. And uh, that was just what he did. You know, he put himself in this situation, and um, he found out that uh, all all of his glory and all the things that he had abounded in, they went away just like that. You know, and, and the the people in the town fled when they saw the sow hit. Had uh had had died, and again, they showed that the people didn't put their faith in God; they put their faith in Saul. And when he died, it was all over. With. They fled. Mm -hmm. Another thing I've read a little commentary on that. They said the guy who he was asking his own bear that was Doug the Edomite. Mm. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah, they said that was Doug the Edomite and said he the reason he probably didn't want to do that, because you know, he the one that had killed all those priests when Saul no, that's had right, that's right. That. Uh -huh. and uh and said Saul the reason he probably wouldn't do that because you know of his, his act of loyalty to Saul and plus if he did that that they would accuse him, you know, that not 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 give him honor for doing that, but actually want to kill him for actually killing the king. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Saul actually was committing suicide. <laughs> he so he wasn't a brave king, but then he he said he didn't want it, want the uncircumcised guys to do it because he a, another another part of the commentary said the reason he said that because he remembered them abusing Samson when they when they had kidnapped him, so mm -hmm. he didn't want them abusing him. He called him uncircumcised, <laughs> which 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 he himself had fell from the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Anybody mm -hmm. want to add to that? I just think it's kind of, you know, strange that people, and I guess, you know, a lot of people do that now. They really are concerned with how they die. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They don't want to mm -hmm. look like they died like a coward. And they don't want somebody to mock them, you know, when they die, but they want to die an honorable death. And, and it's just crazy. I know at one point, I don't know, I might think like that too when the time comes, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But but um, <laughs> I thought in the bad, I'm just like, man, hey, when I'm when I'm dead, it's all over. It's going to make a difference, huh? But, yeah. but the other side of that is, I kind of believe now that we still can, you know, see what's going on here. We just can't communicate with the people here. Mm. Mm. So, you know, Saul so was really concerned even when he died, you know, because when he was living, that's all he cared about, how the people thought of him, how they viewed him. Saw him. Yeah. yeah. And so... He, he was still egotistical, even even to the end. Right. You know, <laughs> he's about to die. He ain't worried about that. I mean, just, I don't want to look bad when I die, you know. Run, mm -hmm. run me through so they won't get my body in. in, in. Right. 
Yeah, and, my head off. <laughs> and then I couldn't understand the situation with the armor bearer neither. I mean, Saul said, go ahead and kill me. Like, right mm -hmm. after that, after you told him, no, you killed yourself. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. like, what were you afraid of after that? And I was just speculating. Maybe he was thinking that if they blamed him, it's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He couldn't. He couldn't go back home with any. any uh, exactly. Any, that is right. Uh, there. Uh, uh, Pat, when you was talking, I was thinking about uh, man, I, I just had a uh, uh. Well, hold on one second. Go, 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 go ahead. Well, um, Doeg, I think probably thought about if he died because I think you know Doeg was like he was a. Uh, a swordsman for hire, mm. which means that he was working to get money, I'm assuming, for his family. So maybe he thought if he was blamed for that, that they would come back around and kill his wife and children. Now, that's, mm. that's way out there what, what I'm thinking. Mm. It could be totally wrong. Mm. Well, but, well, one thing about it, uh, the armor bearer was actually that if he was saw armor bearer, he was, he, he was his main protector. So if they, if they, if the if if the army kill the king and you survive, then how are you protecting him? You're mm -hmm. supposed to give your life first. Mm -hmm. So when 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 Saul took his life, he all the back. No man, I can't be. You know, I can't be left over. I have to do the same thing now. Mm -hmm. I oh uh, I, I was, what I was thinking about was one of the reasons that Saul might have might have killed himself, so nobody get the credit for killing Saul. That too, you know. Can't nobody say, "Oh, I, you know, I'm the one who killed Sal." You know, he he gonna take that away from. Him. He can go ahead and, and run himself through. Mm. And that definitely gonna come into play just a little while from now. Mm -hmm. That's pretty interesting. Okay, bro, Pat. Anybody want to add anything else to that? All right, bro, Pat. Just I, I guess we just just finished that up from eight to thirteen, and we're just starting. Second Sam. So you just finish would you if you don't mind finish eight to, to the end. 13. Okay. Um uh, first Samuel 31, 8 through 13, the King James Version. And it came to pass on the morrow when the Philistines came to strip the slain, that they found Saul and his three sons fallen in Mount Gibor. And they cut off his head and stripped off his armor and sent into the land of the Philistines round about to publish it in the house of their idols and among the people. And they put his armor in the house of Asherah and they fast, fastened his body to the wall of the Bethshan. And when the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard of what which the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and went all night and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons off the wall of, the, of Bashan and came to Jabesh and burnt them there. And they took their bones and buried them under the tree at Jabesh and fasted, fasted seven days. So even right after that, uh, I guess if we just go ahead with what we said, how Saul felt, you know, what would happen with the Philistines and how they would treat him, it ended up happening anyway. Mm -hmm. And so once the Philistines figured out, you know, that the battle was won, now they starting to, to spoil the uh, losing camp or whatever. And they came across Saul and his three sons. And that's exactly who they were looking for. And any time that, you know, people fight against each other, one nation against the other, that's who they're looking for, the king. And they found the king and his royal subjects, I guess, you know, and him and his three sons, and they pretty much just made mockery of them. And um, I guess, what it said, the men of, is it Jabesh? Mm. Even though Saul was a Wicked and corrupt king, you know, you still had some honorable men in his camp or some honorable men around the children of the Israelites. And they, I guess, for the sake of the Lord's anointing, mm -hmm. you know, they just couldn't let that hang up and be like, 
like an embarrassing sight because exactly. they were so happy. You know, they went and started telling everybody. They're just like uh, people who not used to winning. They found <laughs> beat up somebody. You know, they go tell everybody, oh, yeah, man, I whooped them good. <laughs> so it was one of those things. Now, uh, another thing on that day, like you said, a, a Lord's anointed and, 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 and an embarrassment. If, if they probably had just failed him in battle and just left that, you know, but when they took him and and stuck his body here and his armor there, that really was an embarrassment to all those people of God. And they just couldn't have that, you know. They was not going to go along with that. that when you, and they said it valiant man, you know. These people right here, they 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 they, they used to bow, so they came and took it. So they was ready if they had to fight to do it. They their main plan was to to get those, get them and get them a proper berry and to take that armor, you know, from them because you're not gonna and 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 it was a statue that this is what gonna happen if anybody we have a problem with anybody else. So they wouldn't gonna have that, you know, because mm -hmm. you know we we know what kind of people that you all are. You all are not of God, so we're not gonna have that. We, the, the best of of the best in our camp, we're gonna go out and 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 take that and make it right. Absolutely, and uh, speaking on them valiant men, I mean, just think what they had to do in order to get to those bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think they were just you know uh, unguarded and, and and things like that. So those men were prepared to fight. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I'm sure they had to fight. Yeah, they probably did. They probably had them nice and guarded. They had to go right. through some folks to get them bodies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Well, um, what's the guy named? Uh, no. Was that a Kish? The uh, the uh, king of, of, of the Philistines? Was that the guy? Mm -hmm. The one that David was with? Yeah. yeah. That's the same uh, people, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this, this is the same, but I, I don't know they gave the body to the kids. You know, it was a lot of kings. It no, no, about... I was just going to say um, that that he probably used that, you know, for like some sorts of entertainment. Oh, yeah, 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 no doubt. Yeah, come and look and see who we, who, who we just killed. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's all terrible, it's all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all you can kill enough for everybody. Mm -hmm. He ain't nothing now. <laughs> <laughs> He over there yeah. on the wall. Mm. Okay, so uh, anybody want to add anything else? Well, we're going to run on into the uh, second book of Samuel. So we, we know up to now that, uh, that, the, that the Philistines had slayed uh, uh, Saul and his two sons, and, and they, 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 they was planning to make a mockery of his, his body and everything, but the, the people of the uh, 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 of Jobaz Gilead decided against that. So we up to now that they are uh, getting back to David. I'm going to read from uh, 2 Samuel verse 1. I'll read, I'll read. Oh, it's, you got it? Okay. Who is that, brother, brother, hey. brother Wallace? Okay, read from verse uh, verse one through four. <clears throat> Reading the uh, first Samuel, the uh, second Samuel, chapter one, verses one through five. One through four. The, one through four. Reading uh -huh. of the NIV. After the death of Saul, David returned from striking down the uh, Anami, uh, Amalekites and stayed in Ziklag. Two days on the third day, a man arrived, arrived from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. When he came to David, he fell to the ground to pay his honor. Worth where have you come from? David asked him. He answered, I have escaped from the Israel-like camp. What happened? David asked. Tell me. The man uh, fled from the battle and re he replied, many of them fell and died and Saul and his sons and his son Joshua, Jonathan, excuse me, 
are dead. So now we got uh, these four, first four verses are simply saying that after David had uh, returned from this battle from the uh, Amalekites, they manned from the uh, Saul's camp, ran and, 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 you know, told David that Saul and his sons are dead. And David is just, you know, asking him, you know, why, you know, where has he come from? And, you know, why all of a sudden that you have, you know, showed up here. That's all I got. Anybody want to add to that? Well, I find it interesting that this, this guy who's escaping went, went straight to David, you know. Because mm -hmm. from all accounts, David should have been considered a traitor among the Israelites at that point. But mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess he, you know, he probably read like the rest of the Israelites. They, they knew what side their bread was buttered on, that, that he could be the only person that, that could, you know, perhaps save them from these Philistines now that the South has been conquered. Do you think that this uh, guy came to David to try to... Let him uh let David know that you know even though he was with Saul's camp now he you know Saul's dead he can just join David. Could be looking for somebody who was at any point in the storm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, very, very possible. And just like you know everybody, even David men, they consider Saul's you know David enemy. Pretty much everybody. David was the only one they considered that didn't consider Saul as his enemy. So, you know, as many times as David had to kill Saul, they were like, hey, this is the perfect time. Hey, you ain't gonna believe this. We got him. Mm -hmm. So he was one of those guys. He, he was figuring that David would be happy mm -hmm. to know that, hey, you know, the your enemy is dead. Right. Mm -hmm. But they weren't listening really closely to what David say all the time. He always mm -hmm. told them, don't touch the Lord's anointing. You know, and even when he thought about it, the perfect time when he had him laying in the cave, he said, I just can't do it. He was troubling his spirit. So I mean, he meant that. Anybody want to add anything else to that? Bro, Griff, could you, would you mind reading from five to 10? All right, five to ten. Then David said to the young man who had brought who had brought him the report, How do you know that Sal, his son Jonathan, are dead? I happened to be on the Mount Gilboa, the young man said, and there was Sal leaning on his spear with the chariots and riders almost upon him. When he turned around and saw me, he called out to me and said, and I said, what can I do? He asked me, who are you? I'm a Malachite, I answered. Then he said to me, stand over me and kill me. I am in the throes of death, but I'm still alive. So I stood over him and killed him because I knew that after he had fallen, he could not survive. And I took the crown that was on his head in the band on his arm, and I have brought them here to my Lord. I think it's it's really important to see that it was a Malachite that actually had killed Saul, and and not that Saul attempted to kill himself, but it didn't actually go the way he planned. And if Saul had did that, what God had had, uh, had told him to do at first, there would have been no Amalekites. Because he told him to, to to wipe them out, but uh, and we see that the the like Pat was saying that this guy maybe was trying to curry favor now that that Sal was dead that he took the crown and 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 his uh his royal bands and brought them to David to probably try to curry some favor with him because he figured that David would want oops, excuse me he would want Sal dead but well we know how how David feel about Sal. Uh huh. Anybody want to add something to that? It's very interesting, man. You know, I think it's a conspiracy theory, man. 
<laughs> one mm-hmm. end, you know what I'm saying, they say Saul killed these, killed them. Mm-hmm. Another end, you know, initially they said the archer hit them and slew them. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of speculation. And this guy here, if he killed them or if he didn't kill them, he was right there in the midst of it. He, you was, know there. What he was there. He was there. And he yeah. might have, he might <laughs> be trying to add a little sauce on there, you know what right. I'm saying? Right. Like, That's you know, what I'm it sounds like. <laughs> I, I went on fence them on off, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, hey. I couldn't stand to see him suffering like that. <laughs> and to show you I ain't lying, look, he go his crown. I know you know what it looked like. <laughs> and I could just see that. And then when you put in there, I really wasn't thinking about that he was a Amalekite. That probably got David even a little more angry. Mm. Anything else? Well, let's continue on. Uh, Brother Pat, do you mind reading uh, where you stopped off at? 10. Oh, was that uh, 10? Just start 11, pick up 11. Yeah, start at 11 and 15, in at 15. All right. How's it going, bro, Wesley? Read it's going on. Going on. What's going on, gentlemen? What's going on, bro? You doing all right today? I know you got a hundred. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all, how y'all doing tonight? No, good. Doing good. All right. Uh, Second Samuel chapter one. You say uh, ten through 15, eleven through 11. fifteen. Eleven. Mm-hmm. Eleven through fifteen. Okay. Then David took hold on his clothes and he rent them, and likewise all the men that were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until even for Saul and for Jonathan his son and for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. And David said unto the young man that told him, Whence art thou? And he said, I am a son of a stranger and a Malachite. And David said unto him, How was that thou was not afraid to stretch forth thine hand to destroy the Lord's anointing? And David called one of the young men and said, Go near and fall upon him. And he smote him that he died. And so, in my mind, I believe that, you know, the battle was pretty much over with, but you probably still have, you know, the Philistines, soldiers, and you know, the war guy, they were just kind of in the area. So David and them had fell back and they probably was kept in a separate location. And this guy seek David out, told him what it was. And you kind of know already in your head what's happening. But when somebody else came and bring you the news, you know, it's kind of a little more real. So at that point, I mean, they did what I see everybody do in the Old Testament when somebody died or they have something, you know, that 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 um, is real hard to bear happen. You know, they rent their clothes, they tore their clothes, and they begin to weep, and then they said they fasted. But then he also asked them a question. He said, "How how was it so easy for you, you know, to kill the Lord's anointed?" And I think that's a question we should ask ourselves. Mm-hmm. sometimes it's hard you know we see people in positions and they jack legs you know they not teaching the word of God and you really want to give them a good tongue lash you mm-hmm. know it's hard not to think that way but we yeah. also have to think that that's the Lord's anointing exactly you might put them in that spot for whatever reason and I mm-hmm. think that's a real testament to today <laughs> He had to kill Saul, and I think God delivered him into uh, David's hand. Mm. But he had sense enough to know, hey, now maybe not with Nabal. You know, he was ready to take care of Nabal. <laughs> but every time I see him, you know, dealing with Saul, he always deal with him respectfully, and he always called him the Lord's anointed, even though he already knew what type of fellow he was. Mm. One thing about that, David didn't give him, he didn't say anything about what was his reply when David asked him that. <laughs> he just didn't even, you know. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't no good answer there, was it? <laughs> yeah. 
Really? You talking to him already? That's the same. Y'all remind me of what uh, Samuel did. Remember that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. What was, like uh, was it a gag or somebody like that? Well, he, mm-hmm. just, he just went and sliced them up there. Now. <laughs> it. There won't be no question. Hey, there, a gag, come here right quick now. No, look at him. And you know another thing. I guess even what else, whatever answer he did gave David wasn't gonna go along with it. No <laughs> <way>. <laughs> <laughs> He, he, mm-hmm. I guess he just that, that was for his own benefit to ask him that. It, right. that, that. That didn't bother you to do that. You didn't <laughs> even think about he was the Lord's anointed, and you didn't have the you you shouldn't been able to do that. Somebody that was you know in a higher state or something like that. Well, anybody want to add anything to that? No, Let's go. Uh from... huh. Go ahead. I'm just saying he probably asked himself. He said, I know it was hard for me to do. <laughs> <laughs> the guy didn't even think of, it. you know, just, just went on with it. Well, let's go from uh uh let's continue on. Bro Wester, would you mind reading uh verse 16 through 20 through 20? Yes, sir, I got you. And David said unto unto him, the, Thy blood upon the head, for thy mouth had testified against thee, saying, Have slain the Lord anointed. And David lamented, and then with the lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan, his son. Saul so bade them teach the children of Judah, use the bow, behold, as written in the book in the book of Jasher. The beauty of Israel was slain upon the high place, um, how the mighty is fallen. Till the till it not into Gath, but plunged not to the streets of Ascon. Let lest the daughters of Philistine rejoice, lest the daughters of uncircumcised triumph. Hmm. It looked like he's sad in a way, but and happy in a way. He don't want everybody to be happy about the situation because I even today's time as Christians. We wonder how we go through so much stuff. Lord, why me? I thought I was one of your anointed. But as David asked that question and before, you know, why not us? You know, why why can't we go through the stuff we go through to make us a better person? Because mm. David also went through stuff to make him a better person. Anybody want to chime in on that? Mm. Uh, I I think David was doing like a twofold thing kind of here. He was um he 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 was of course he was letting men letting men uh Saul and Jonathan's death. Uh, you know he honored them in in, in poetry form because he he was a poet. At the same time, he's using it as a, a, a I think, a rallying Elan cry for the Israelites. He said, "Tell it not in Gath, publish it not in the streets of uh, uh, Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, and lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph." Like we're gonna we're gonna be sad for for Jonathan and and uh and and uh and Sal, but we're gonna keep it to ourselves. You know, we're gonna keep it sadness to ourselves. Because we don't want them to see us being weak, you know. We want them to see us being unified. Mm-hmm. So he was using he used it both, you know, as a, a, as an honorarium and as a rallying cry to to try to unify the uh, the people of Israel. Yeah, because he don't want them to get no glory. Mm-hmm. And then another thing in there, uh, I read a little commentary on that when he that that uh, that song up the boat that he said make sure you teach that to all the children mm-hmm. that was another uh the commentary read is that the bow was another weapon that was actually introduced because as most of the weapons back then uh at the time that david then was fighting was the, the sword and the, the spear and the sling you know in which it was like I, when, he, when he mentioned the sling i guess david had taught others how to use that sling Mm-hmm. And those were the, the weapons of choice for them. But mm-hmm. those uh the uh the Philistines that 
they're, they're, they're came, they came out with those bows, and that was the main weapon that helped overthrow Saul them and all his men. So that was a new, the commentary looked at it, that was a new weapon that was introduced as a, uh, for, 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 for David. So he was telling them to not actually, it, it kind of related to the song, but started teaching them how to use that bow because we're going to need mm -hmm. that more than anything mm -hmm. as the weapon for protection. Mm -hmm. And then they said he actually was talking to the, the Judah because that was, he, he was going to be reigning over Judah first before over all of Israel. Yeah. Anybody want to add anything else to that? No, I, I like that you brought that point up. You know, when Saul, when they first started this, and they was talking about Saul, they would they didn't have no weapons in Israel. Remember, mm -hmm. they had to go down to the Philistines to, to eat exactly. the plows and stuff sharpen. Uh, so I mean, for all his thing that that the Saul was was bad for, he did teach them mm -hmm. warfare or how to protect themselves. You know what I'm saying? He did bring that to them, so he wasn't. He wasn't a, a a useless king, even though he wasn't a great king. Mm -hmm. He did he, he did bring them to a point where they could at least protect themselves. Good. I hope so too. Every now and then, man, he did some things right. Mm. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that was a great point, brother David, bringing in the archery, because mm -hmm. if you got those swords and stuff, you got to be right up on a person. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Which would indicate, I think they said the guy who shot Saul, he was on a high place. Mm. To pick them off, you know, which I'll be quiet after this. It kind of lets you know that the Philistines were kind of a little more advanced than those neighboring, you know, uh, mm -hmm. nations around them. Mm -hmm. Because for them to even go to for uh, Lystia to try mm -hmm. to get some weapons, you know, try to get some protection, let you mm -hmm. know. That first of all, you going into the enemy's camp, but you don't care because I need some weapons. Uh yeah. Uh I think what it was with the Philistines, what they would do is that when they took over, when they killed the people, or they they took over people, whatever mm -hmm. kind of technology and stuff those people had, they absorbed it. They absorbed mm -hmm. it into to, to their uh society. So can we say the Philistines with uh Chinese people? <laughs> they, kind of, they kind of remind me of the what was it, the Borg on, on, on Star Trek. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absorbed. Mm -hmm. But uh well one thing we know is that they they wasn't God's people. Oh no, they, 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 not they, only did they, they absorb their 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 uh their technology, they absorb whatever kind of God they had too. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what kind of God you got over there. We'll build one of them too. We'll pray <laughs> that God too then. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody want to add anything else to that? We can go on and continue. Uh, I'm going to read from uh, verse 21 to 23. And this 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 is a continuation of that, that song, which is always to uh, chapter 2. It's a continuation of the song. So verse 21 to 23. O mountains of Gibeah, let there be no dew nor rain upon you, nor fields of offering, for the shield of the mighty is cast away there. The shield of Saul not anointed with oil from the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, and the sword of Saul did not return empty. Saul and Jonathan were beloved and pleasant in their lives and and in their death they were not divided they were swifter than eagles they were stronger than lions in 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 in, in this right here this this is this stanza is actually these three stanzas actually playing paying homage to Saul and his and his and his uh son and it was letting everybody know that you know in the area that that they acted was slain in, let there be no dew nor rain upon the fields. And, you know, it's, it, and, and they said the shield of the mighty, the shield of the mighty were cast away there and letting them know that, that that's where they were defeated on. And and they was talking about the, uh, the shield of Saul not anointed with oil. 
And I guess he, he and I guess he as he was talking about him, that even though he had fell out of the, the reign of God, that those people that was fighting with him was they, they were all fighting toward, they were all fighting with the spirit of God in them, even though he wasn't as being the leader. And 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 they, then it made mention of, of him and Jonathan that even though they were divided in their thinking, because it, as in we already know that how Saul wanted to kill David, which was actually one of God's anointed right there. And God didn't tell him to do that. But, but Jonathan was a kindred spirit with, with David. But in the end, they were divided, but they came together under war because he died with his dad. You know, anybody want to add something to that? It's almost like his obit obituary. You know how you talk about a person, give him praise. You know, I think David, in his in CR, so his insensitivity, he really missed all. You know, you know he he had a chance to kill him himself. It's is, it is still his opponent. Uh, so throughout the trying times. He still give him high praise because he was a worthy opponent, but he thought he was of God. And Saul lost that long way, long time ago. Anybody else want to add to it? I just want to say, man, this this is definitely a love ballad. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though Saul turned out to be the way that he was, David still thought highly of this man. You know, and Who's to say why? Uh, first of all, when we look at Saul's character, he was taller than everybody. You know, he was a goodly looking person. He was stout. And I just kind of correlate that to the way Samuel felt when God had tore the kingdom away from Saul. You know, the Bible said that, that Samuel mourned for him. Mm -hmm. David, David thought the world of uh, Saul and Jonathan, he felt like they were just, you know, like, y'all don't see what's going on. Like, man, they done just took the wind out the sail. He just went right with God. You know what I'm saying? He probably was the, tried to be the people's man, and he tried to be a people pleaser. I believe another thing that what, what led uh, since Samuel first, Samuel and David to to lay men and to feel for Saul and, and, and David to have that kind of feeling for Saul, even though that this man was after his life, was that he was God and God anointed him to be king. Mm. And he had such faith in God that mm. if God anointed this man, he can't be all bad. So, I mean, and his love for God made him feel that way for Saul. That if God had touched him and made him be king, and and he was able to go prophesy with the prophets and all that, mm -hmm. then he he looked at him as being an anointed person, and mm -hmm. so he was precious in that sight. If he was precious in God's sight during that time, he would he had to be special. So he David it just he had a kinder spirit toward that because that was from his connection to God. Anybody want to add on that? Just, just, just tie a knot from what you just said to the fact that if Saul would have just did right what he yeah. could have been, you know, they were looking at his potential. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, like yeah. Man, God has sent you over his army. You know what I'm saying? And David was looking at his own life too. He realized where he came from and all the things that God was doing for him. Mm -hmm. Then we can take that into our own lives. You know, we have family members. Oh, like, man. man. The Lord really could use you, man. You just don't mm -hmm. know. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But they can't see it. Mm -hmm. Paul couldn't see it. You know, he, okay, I guess it. That's what you want to do. You think God want to do this? Okay, good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, hey, man, we got some people waiting, man. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I got about 100 guests down there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, you know, I, like, man. It was the potential, man, I think. And that's just to add to that, Pat, man, I think it's, we see a lot of that today, you know, mm -hmm. where God would touch a person and, and start to bloom, and then that person started thinking, well, I'm doing this myself, you know, 
I really don't need God for all this. I, I, I can carry this weight on my own. And that's how sound was. And then you got this other guy that's coming up, and God's just putting everything on him. And that just made Sal even angrier, you know what I'm saying? That, that God that turned his favor away. Now he's putting everything on this guy. So explain a lot of the dichotomy between David and, and Sal, you know, because uh, Sal saw David getting that favor that he was once getting and seeing the potential that he thought that he could carry on himself being fulfilled in David with God's help. Mm -hmm. You know, and another thing, and another thing on that man is, you know, if we look within ourselves relating to us now, of uh, all of us have been, we were somebody's child. And at that time, you know, your mother or your father, the, what they did teach you, if you didn't go uh, or be according to that, you was kind of a disappointment, especially if you went astray and did mm -hmm. things not according to what they was teaching you. You know, that's the same thing with our with those of us that have children now, when you teach them from birth the way of God, and then they get out there in the world, and it's like selective amnesia. Everything that you taught is gone now. And that even though that they're grown and they own, they're, they're, they're doing their own thing, that hurts is still there, especially when they're not doing what was, was good for the, the family. It was good for the mother and the father and now I taught you, you know, it's lineage. We send that down. And then you get caught up in the world and you're doing this and doing that. And it's a disappointment then to those. So it was just like they, that's how they looked at it back then. As Since Saul, he didn't do, he, he started out doing the right thing. But then he started just going on his own and doing this. And I guess maybe when he, when he was able to uh, prophesy with the prophet, and then those people came and said, wait a minute now. Is this Saul with the prophet? Mm. It looked like they knew the kind of person that he that he that he was or, or that he used to be, and they and, and it, they didn't want to accept him like that. Which sometimes when people don't accept us, they start looking at us as being other. We started adhering to that and started being the way that instead of that God want us to be, the way that the world has us to be. Absolutely, yeah. You know, I could talk all day. I just want to say this one thing, though. Just picture when Saul and David first kind of got acquainted. After he killed the liar, just picture that moment when Saul, you know, he was trying to do good, and he mm -hmm. saw this young boy. And I think he kind of took him under his wing, you know, but God helped David to see the wrong and the right that Saul was doing. And mm -hmm. so... He was, he probably would forever be like the potential father that David never had. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody want to add anything there to that? We're going to finish it on up. Verses uh, 24 to 27. Bro, Wally, would you mind reading that? Bro, Davian? All right. Okay. The daughter of Israel, weep for Saul, who clothed you in charlotte and fiery, who anointed, not anointed, to adore your garment with ointment of gold. The how the mighty have fallen in battle. Uh, Joshua, Joshua, Jonathan, last. Slain on his height, on your height, I grieve for you. Uh, Jonathan, my brother, you were very dear to me. Your love for me was wonderful, more wonderful than that of women. How the mighty has fallen, the weapon of war has perished. This, um, this is like a real love letter. This is like a real love letter, especially to um to Jonathan. He said his he was wonderful, his love was wonderful more like more than a woman. So he really David must really love Jonathan if he, you know, felt that way about him. We know how David loved women. <laughs> <laughs> It's like that old Master Peace on name. I really miss <laughs> my home. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you were in a better place. Right? 
<laughs> yeah, he, he loved that. He loved that brother right there. You know, uh, it was like, you know, he, he could, David looked at him as like, that's my biological brother. He had mm. that much love for him, you know? Mm. And you know, if he said even, see, and then the, 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 our mindset in that, you know, anybody would read that pet say, wait a minute, man, that's some gay stuff. It, man, that's because mm. you don't understand the love of God. You know, that's 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 agape love, deep, heartfelt, blood to blood. You know, he looked at that man as man. You know, hey, I'll give my life for you. You know, and 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 and, and we already know that Jonathan was the same way with him. He went against his father for him. You know, so he he really cherished that friendship that they had. You know, that was special to him. And and to you know for him to fall in the battle like that, and I'm quite sure David Rutherford Jonathan had to have been with him, and mm -hmm. him he you know the uh uh you know Akish, those other generals that was around him, they didn't want David there, you know. So David, we don't know that if David had a, a arterial motive, was he gonna actually fight against his own people? Or was he gonna help them slaughter them? Which yeah, I think he probably would have, you know. Because, you know, before that, he wasn't telling uh, Akish everything that he was doing. And he, and when he actually went out to fight, he slaughtered everybody because he didn't want nobody, the word getting back to Akish that he wasn't doing what he thought he was going to do. So, yeah, I think that he may have had an arterial motive. That this is a way that they think I'm with them. I can come from behind. We get we, we take care of them just like that. Mm -hmm. But he had, a, and, and he would have been fighting right back the side of Jonathan at the time, you know, and Saul. Because he actually didn't want to, we already know he didn't want to kill Saul because he had plenty of time, you know, and he was hoping that the time that I was I was snuck up on him and, and showed him that I could have took your life, that Saul would give in, but he never did, you know. So when they actually got, got their lives taken in battle, that hurt him deeply. Not only Saul, but really Jonathan, you know. Because like I said, he said that the love of you surpasses any love that I'd had of any woman. So that's deep right there. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to add to that? Just, just thinking how David, this just shows you the symbolism between him and God. Just mm -hmm. like you were thinking all those times that he could have killed him and he came back and told him. He was giving him a time to straighten up, you know, straighten mm -hmm. up and fly right. God was the same way. And then finally, God got tired and just said, hey, you're not going to be king no more. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. He, he gave him time and time again. And the biggest thing I don't want y'all to miss, man, Brother David, you hit it on the head, them bow and arrows. What did verse 27 say? How the mighty have fallen and the weapons of war perished. Mm-hmm. Them swords were no match for them bow and arrows. <laughs> yep. And, and so just so you don't like have them, to be close to them. Right. Did you like somebody bringing a knife to a gunfight, man? Yeah, buddy. You don't have a chance. And that's why he wanted them to make sure not only do you teach them this song, but teach them how to use that bow. As you know what? Not 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 as the as the adults. Because it ain't hard for us to learn. Then some of them gonna be set in their ways and want to do this, you know, people that was good just why I don't want that. But he said, teach the children. Make sure they know how to do it as them as they coming up. Anybody want to add to that? That's the uh, we finishing up on uh, the uh first chapter of uh second Samuel. Anybody want to add to the rest of that? All I'm gonna yeah. say is those were the words of a king. Mm -hmm. But also, we got to look at God's love never changed for anybody. He just stopped talking to all, you know. So it let us know when it comes to us and we in trouble or we just need to slow it down and listen to God mm -hmm. and pray because we all are anointed some kind of way. But God still loves Saul like he loved David. Okay, guys, that's going to be that on the first chapter of 2 Samuel. 
And next week we'll be running into that second Samuel. Uh, bro, Griff, you want to get in, give in the parting words, anything? Uh, the the parts we're gonna come into next, they got a lot of historical stuff on it. So I want to make sure we get those those notes out to help us to go through okay. them. Uh, I might find some other some other information uh, or some more resources we can use, just so we can get a, a great uh, a great hold on what on this next part that we're gonna go in. Uh, I think we did. We we went through this. And I think we 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 picked up. Of course, you can go through it a hundred times and you find a hundred different things. Yeah, uh, but uh, I I think we did a good portion on this first part. And uh, we get to the point where we can really drag drag down into some 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 uh uh some really uh, uh deep learning type stuff on each part that we come to, and I want to make sure we have the resources to that. Uh, remember our our assignments for the for the next until Easter. We're gonna find ten people if you haven't found them already that you're gonna pray for every night, uh, and uh, make sure we're doing that. Uh. And and that's pretty much it. We're gonna we need to decide on what church we're gonna go to on what what uh weekend or uh, and we're gonna visit somebody at church this this uh coming up week or the next week after that. These anybody got anything Friday. special they got going on? <laughs> I about to say you want to make it special. We can go for Easter, whatever you want to you know, do. Yeah, it don't it don't make a difference to me, man. Whatever. Uh. I think we're visiting the church uh, on the third Sunday. It's not a, it's not our church, it's, but it's like at two o'clock. Um, we're visiting their church. Uh, I think it's in. I won't say it's in Tunica, uh, Walnut Street. I'm not sure where the exact location is, but we're gonna be visiting them on uh, the third Sunday, uh, fourth Sunday this month. We got our our uh, church anniversary. On the fourth Sunday, uh, I'm uh, I didn't any plans for this Sunday. Uh, if you guys want to do some at church this Sunday, we can. All right, where where you guys want to go to? No, no preference. Oh man, I got to take Audrey back Sunday though. All right, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. I take her back, man. Yeah, I don't know. We need to do a church anniversary. Our church anniversary is on the fourth Sunday. You, the fourth Sunday this month. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we'll just plan to go to your church then. Oh, we still we can do something on third Sunday too. Okay, I mean, ain't nobody saying mm -hmm. nothing. So, well, put your <laughs> uh, put your Griff, put your church address in the uh, in the that? email. Okay, put I will. your church address, yeah, and everything. All right, all right, man. Yeah. It's been uh, start of service. So we we are going to get uh we're gonna are we going to plan on doing the the track service again, uh, Pete, want to pray about it and see what God says as far as I mean, doing can, the track uh ministry. Yeah, we definitely can do it. Uh, just one Saturday and just pick the time, you know. Okay. Be, maybe we'll get some good night Saturdays in here coming right. up. All right. All right, now we can talk about this uh some more through uh text this week and get everything uh sorted out. Uh somebody wanna pray us out? How about you, Greg? All right, I'll, all right, I'll pray us out. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this Bible study tonight, oh Father. Have us come together and study your word one more time, oh Father. Hopefully something was read or something was said that would get, get deep down in our souls, oh, Father, and help us to be men of your own heart like David, oh, Father. As you lead us, just open up this book, oh, Father, and let us get deeper into it, oh, Father, so we can go out and spread your word and bring more men to you, oh, Father. As always, oh, Father, open our minds, increase our understandings, and add to our wisdom, oh, Father. We pray in your son Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 All right, my brother. Hey, guys. All right, see y'all next uh, Monday night. All right, guys. All right, now. All right.